Can we get Lyme disease from using the app TikTok? And I wish. I'm going to say I wish everyone who watched TikTok had Lyme disease. <laughs> Welcome to another edition of the Law Offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker. Whoa. What? Sorry. What? I burped. I didn't mute myself in time. I burped in the air. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Sorry, listeners. Welcome to the Law Offices of Burp, Squabble, and Burp. <laughs> Belch, burp. <laughs> On this March 30th, 2022, it's an auspicious occasion because today is the day when Moon Knight is finally released on Disney+. Plus. What? What? Oh, my God. You give me your code. <laughs> You're just going to have to come over and watch it or something, Greg. Anyway, our client for today is take this job and gently insert it in your rectum. Behold, trapped in a hellscape of their own invention, socially unaware old white men bound by the pretense of being fake lawyers yet knowing no law, no exquisite Latin terminology, they are inexplicably compelled to quibble over minutia, squabble over triflings, and bicker like those who value their backyards far too highly without even knowing the difference between an easement and an alleyway. At this very moment, you have entered the heart of the law offices of quibble, squabble, and bicker. Let's get started. If you got children, and you need a place to drop them off for the day, look no further than Dodgy Daycare. Designed for children between the ages of 3 and 6 years old, Dodgy Daycare goes that extra mile to ensure your cherished ones are given the strictest care possible. Started in 2022, founder Vinny Pastalucci realized that kids are our future because, as he says, We are the world. We are the children. We're the ones who make a brighter day. So let's start giving. Every child at Dodgy Daycare is trained in the art of finance and chance. To teach them responsibility, they're given dice, playing cards, and a miniature horse. They gotta learn the basics. Or the crap out in life. Then we gotta send Johnny Tunos after him to get my money. My kids have been going to Dodgy Daycare for two months. And already they've given me the odds for the main thoroughbreds at Belmont. And busted my kneecaps when I defaulted on Vinny's gracious donation at my weekly poker game. Dodgy Daycare is located right off of Exit 33 on the Turnpike in Patterson, New Jersey. Financing is available through Long Legs Tony. Teach your kids real life skills. Let's start giving. Send your kids to Dodgy Daycare now. I loved it. Though as an Italian, I'm very offended. <laughs> We're not all like that, man. Not all like what? Uh, runners of daycares? Yeah, the thinly veiled mafioso. <laughs> Johnny Two Nose. Oh, is that what he said? Yeah, but I think it was originally supposed to be Johnny Two Knives, and you know, due to my. Uh, inability to speak sometimes it became like Johnny Two Knows Johnny better. Two Knows. it's a funnier name so it we do have two host. people on uh tiktok right now so hello everybody we're doing a podcast this is live on youtube as well as live on tiktok and if you want to watch the whole thing people um, go to it's funny someone named the italian stallion just joined and they missed the entire dodgy daycare commercial so you go to youtube the law yeah. offices of quibble squabble and bicker you can see uh, what's going on on the other side as opposed to just the side of my face and uh, so that's what's happening right now, everybody. Anyway, so yeah, uh, Dodgy Daycare. I, I actually got that idea because I was driving somewhere in town and I saw a sign for a doggy daycare, but I thought it said Dodgy Daycare. <laughs> so I went, oh, that'd be a perfect fake sponsor for us to do one of these days. At least it's truth and average advertising. They're not trying to hide it. <laughs> that's right. Hey, you know, it's something that's good. But I'm sorry you're offended by the horrible accents once again. That I'm no good at doing. I've definitely learned. No, the, the accents that offend me is the insinuation that Italians are all mafia people. But, oh, and, uh, there's and no mafia that, associated with this. And they that just they're happen congested. to have accents. <laughs> they're all congested. <laughs> Pasta Lucci sounded like he's so congested. Like, I, I have a cold. I have a head cold, but I'm going to do this commercial. <laughs> I know. I'm just hoping I don't get in trouble for using the picture of a real mafia crime boss. So, oh, was that after the me. Tuno's guy? Oh, Pastalucci was. Yeah, I, it was, what was that? I can't remember the guy's name. I mean, one of the one of the pictures was actually De Niro from uh, Goodfellas. Yeah, but, uh, 
So now Pasolucci, that's his alias. He was a mob boss. Now he's kind of like. I think he died, so I think we might be safe unless he's got some like lingering um, uh, henchmen who you know want to come after obscure podcast people. So I do not endorse the the previous ad. (laughs) We was sponsored. But it could be good. It could be a good learning experience for your kids. You could be wearing concrete kids at the bottom of the Willamette. <laughs> oh, hey, Sanchez El Dorado is here. Sanchez El Dorado, so um, if you're if you're listening throughout the show, by the time we come up with Ask Greg, come up with a question to ask him, and we'll uh, we'll use your question. Remember, it's got to be a, a legal S question, so we'll see how it does. Oh, hey, we got somebody from TikTok on YouTube. Thanks for coming over, Avery Salazar. Appreciate that. If you um, hear me. Yes, yes. So we've got a, someone from TikTok who's come over to uh, watch the podcast. Hopefully, it's it's worth their time. <laughs> anyway, all right. So the client for today, for those who don't know, we are a fake law office, and we have fake sponsors. We also have a uh, fake uh, cooking segment and uh, a fake legal advice section of the show. And, and I right think now, we're, we're <laughs> right. He does. Um, and uh, right now, we're going into our fake client. And our client for today is take this job and place it gently in your rectum. So that, I think, brings us to where the hell did jobs come from that people got to be paid for? I mean, I understand in the, in the beginning days of civil, of, before civilization, you had to have a job to, to feed yourself. And the job was self-created because you had to go find food to shove in your face so you could survive. But somewhere along the line, after we got out of the must find grub to shove in my face, there came a point when somebody else said, if you get grub, if you get food for me to shove in my face, I will give you a thing for that, for doing that. And I think that's probably like the beginning stages of jobs and careers, in my opinion. You like bartering favors, basically. Right. Like, but I'm good at making fires. You're good at hunting or... You think that's where it came from? You think it came from like fires was like uh Well, that's, some people aren't good at making a fire. It's a tough. good bartering skill to to cook their meat or cook their lettuce. Something, yeah. Do you think they were cooking plants back in the day or they were just cooking animals? I said baby, uh, they didn't need to. You could just what? eat a baby. Well, no, Why did you say was... Why did you say baby? I said maybe baby. <laughs> I was thinking Buddy Holly, baby, baby, <laughs> I'll have you. You'll be true. Well, you know, we are the world. We are the children. Yes. <laughs> hey, why didn't you quote, uh, why didn't you quote, uh, I believe the children are a feature? <laughs> I see more apropos. I think that was, wasn't that the quote? I thought you were doing We're the World. Yeah. But, but the Whitney Houston song, you know, that I believe the children are a future. Do, 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 and I don't know the rest. <laughs> oh that oh okay that's a different song is why because yes. i didn't because i didn't even think about it that would be why yeah and it looks like we lost our tiktok vis- tiktok visitor to youtube they're gone now unless they're still there and sanchez El Dorado is has joined us still they're still with us anyway yeah. so jobs where did they come from and how did it yeah, become the was- hell that it is currently where you know like somebody like you is stuck with some restaurant in portland oregon washing dishes to try and survive well i think it started with when civilization started and you know it, dishwashing we thinking that's uh well getting paid for it uh-huh. uh, we we grew up thinking that like civilization great we started civilization but a lot of bad things happen stratification of society is a sign archaeologists use that as a sign of a higher civilization so basically when things get unfair and shitty archaeologists are like wow they were pretty advanced you know like when people are just hunter gatherers they're all kind of equal maybe there's yeah. a chief and a, a you know a shaman well there are definitely better hunters and better gatherers than- yeah but i mean one civilization like mesopotamia like stratified society it was just people in power who could be like you have to work for me you yeah. can be a slave but they, not everyone was a slave so it was just like i'll pay you to do this job you know or i won't kill you maybe <laughs> do you think some... people started do you think jobs started off as slaves 
back in the early yeah. days of humanity. Like well, they didn't no, even see, they didn't even think about doing something nice for the other person. They just basically forced them to start yeah. working for them. But I think the the first theory was correct. I bet there was jobs, quote unquote, you know, as a barter thing between hunter yeah. gap. They're like, you're good at hunting. I'm good at making a an axe or something or something uh -huh. more primitive, a club. I'll make you a club if you give me three venison. What if they had different They're people here. who all made clubs in different ways and they formed their own organization and they probably called it a club club at the time? <laughs> you think? I'm sure that's the name they used. I thought it would be a guild. <laughs> it would be the club guild? The guild of clubs? The local the local 454 club maker <laughs> union. So let, let's take it back to the beginning. Let, let's just kind of like role play out like what that initial conversation came about. So here you have Gorg or whatever his name is. I know we came up with a name for early man once in one of our earlier episodes. Ugh. Was it Ugg was the name know. of our our generic uh, Neanderthal individual? Zog. Z wasn't Zog part of Superman 2 or something? Zod. General Zod. Okay. As opposed to Z, which is the the last letter in the Canadian and English alphabet. But Zog is also what uh, anti-Semites call the Zionist overlords. Oh. They I call him Zog. I didn't know. That would be a good science fiction uh, villain name, too. Yeah. I think. It Let's could be say, a name of a planet, um, for that matter. Why don't we just say Fred and Barney? So Fred and Barney are talking. That's two good caveman names. Fred and Barney. No, that couldn't work because Fred and Barney are... Are British names. Well, they're, they're cavemen in Britain. Britain had cavemen. Did they? And they drank tea. <laughs> Pterodactyl <laughs> tea. Pterodactyl tea? Was that <laughs> made like, from like the uh, the droppings of a pterodactyl when it's been eating leaves or something? Yeah, I believe so. It's like so. it goes through the pterodactyl's digestive system before they could actually drink it. Doesn't that sound like a shitty Donovan song or something? Well, no, a shitty thing would be like those um, meerkats or whatever they feed coffee to. And uh, they... They do this? Oh, yeah, this is like a real thing where there's these animals. I don't know if they're meerkats. There's some kind of... I don't know about meerkats, yeah. ...ferret-type animal that is fed coffee beans. And then those coffee beans are sold after they go through their system. What? Um, as a... Um, a luxury item. So do you think I could sell the corn I find in my shit the next day? <laughs> oh, no, like but but corn. but if you ate coffee, if you like swallowed coffee beans whole and saved those afterwards, there is a possibility you could sell those if you said they came from the animal that we were talking about. Or it could so, be me because people would be like, oh, it has a slight bourbon undertone to it. <laughs> <laughs> this has been aged. This has been aged in the bowels of a 53 year old man for four years. A drunk. All right, so it's a civet. It's a civet cat. It's a uh, an animal called an Asian palm civet. They roam the forests of Bali at night, eating ripe coffee cherries and excreting the coffee beans. So you'd have to eat coffee cherries, and then I guess what? I, I guess the cherry is like what? Yeah. The, the bean is the pit. So who shit. first decided to brew this shivet shit shit? Shivet shit? Who was the first per first per person in, uh, where is it, Bali? Did you say? I guess. Well, maybe what happened was they were sifting, <laughs> sifting <laughs> through, um, you know, the uh, fumets <coughs> of the civet, to, to use a, a not used word, fumets. Um, there's another term I could be using that I'm not thinking of, but uh, that, that one works. And, um, like, they're tracking them through the jungle because maybe they wanted to eat them. And then they found that there was, like, a hard substance within the excrement of the palm. So throw it in the coffee pot. Why not? <laughs> they were like, of course, this looks like it's coffee beans. Well, you know, I guess if you boil it long enough, it's going to make it sterile. So it's not going to affect you. As long as you strain, right. you strain the the boiled water afterwards, unless you like that little tang of uh, fecal pieces in your apparently coffee. they do. It's a luxury. Maybe, maybe you know, maybe something coming from the animal makes it uh, that much more special. You know, I don't yeah. know. But um, anyway, 
So I don't know what my point was. Oh, yeah. So in other words, so you could do that with coffee beans and uh, you could sell them probably to on any number of coffee shops here in the Portland metropolitan area since, you know, it's known for being a coffee hub. But it's Portland, though. They don't want to come and beat the shivet. It's, why do you uh, keep saying shit? The locally, well, how do you say Civet. it? Civet. Civet. Yeah, C I V E. It's a shitty car name. The 2022. The Civet. Honda Civet. The Honda Civet. Oh, that's why I think it says Civet. Yeah. Civet. So, so anyway, so I, I don't know how we got off on the the coffee tangent here, but we were talking about like jobs in the beginning of humanity. So yeah. you've got people who are. Oh, yeah, we're talking about pterodactyl tea. That's where it came from. So going back, since pterodactyls weren't around when humans were around, I believe, I wouldn't know because I can't remember that. But um, then you have somebody who's out getting either animals or plants to bring back to the cave to eat. Right. So... Well, it's the men were the hunters and the women were the gather gatherers, allegedly. I don't know why women couldn't be hunters back in the day when they weren't pregnant. Because they did, thought they weren't strong enough, I guess. Or it just wasn't woman's work. Yeah, I mean, but you back like then, the everybody's working hard. I'm sure they were probably as not as muscular as the men, but muscular, hardy. They were hardy women of the time, of the yeah, era, yeah. you know. I'm sure um, cave women were like tougher than any dude you've ever met. A cave yeah, woman. but maybe it had to do with like uh, menstruation. Maybe like they couldn't go out hunting for like a week per month oh. because then they would become the prey of the things that they were hunting. If they were hunting. Like the bear thing. Like if you go camping and it attracts bears, women on their menstrual cycle, if they go yes. camping, worry about bears. Just bears? But what if you want to hunt a bear? Bring a woman. She'll lure the bear. With her menses. Yeah, you know, and it could just a be... Like, bear lure. But so I that, wonder if that aggravates the bear. Like, the bear would, like, suddenly um, get very angry and maybe become manic and make it a lot harder to kill. I guess. I, I think when you start to kill a bear, it gets pretty angry. So it's going to be <laughs> angry once you start... Hunting. Yeah, but, you know, sometimes when the adrenaline is pumping... It's a lot harder to kill the thing that's got the adrenaline, like Rasputin. You know, it took so many different ways of killing him because he was all worked up before he finally died. You know, he was stabbed and poisoned, yeah, but it was but it was drowning that actually killed him. Yeah, but that was like superhuman what he did. No adrenaline could explain the punishment he went through. No, no adrenaline could explain the punishment he went through. Yeah, he was like insane. What how they put enough poison him to kill an elephant? They shot him. They like, they did everything, and he wouldn't die. And no, I you know I know adrenaline can make it a little stronger, but it's like a freaky story, Rasputin. Like how it doesn't even make sense. It must be exaggerated. Because do you think Rasputin was a robot? He could have been like a like Unbreakable, you know, Bruce Willis. Maybe yeah. he was a superhuman. Like maybe throughout history, there are people who just who were born with extraordinary abilities. Uh huh. And yeah, sure. <laughs> but he didn't have a job. He was a grifter. I guess that's a job being a grifter. You got to work at it. He was a uh, a what's the what's the word a uh, mystic grifter. Mystic grifter. That's the name of my next band. That's a nice name, <laughs> or at least an album. Yeah. Actually, I think I think I'm going to start using that for my nickname at karaoke. Yeah, <laughs> I like it. <laughs> It rolls off the tongue. Just call me Mystic Grifter. I think that actually was a John Denver song. That's too cool for John Rocky Denver. Mountain High, Mystic Grifter. It sounds like it could be like a Nick Cave song. Or... Oh, maybe. Or somebody who like delves into spiritual arenas more. So maybe more like a Marilyn yeah. Manson or something. But that's a job. Being a thief, I guess. Being Different a thief is a job. job. Yeah, you work and you get paid. Because nobody pays you. They pay you against their will. Well, wait a second. You, uh, how are you? What? <laughs> As a thief, you're getting paid, but nobody pays you? But, well, I mean, well, if you're stealing something. It, but yeah. The definition of a job is you work to get money, and then you get money. So that's that's what a thief does, right? He works, plans a robbery. 
does yeah. the job. He, he, he takes money. something that doesn't belong to him. It's like communism. That's true. Right. So, um, no, not like communism. <laughs> they want to take the hard earned efforts of the proletariat that they, that they worked to create. Uh huh. Technically, that doesn't work that way in, in, in reality, but yeah. All right, commie. Yeah. <laughs> You're like defending communism as. I'm defending the pure essence of it, but it never works. I, I, I'm not a communist because it doesn't work in reality. There's always some asshole who's like, no, but wait, I'm in charge. And, uh, yeah, I there's still always somebody in charge, somebody who wants what you've got. Yes. So and that's why we work. That's why we have jobs. Because somehow when civilization started, there's always people who had more than everyone else. There's some finagling or cunning or strength just because they were stronger. Yeah. And so everyone ended up working for that guy. They were like, I own all the resources. So if you want to work, you know, you have to work for me at my factory or my farm. Cause you don't own a farm. Well, it's so like this, this, this struggle for attaining stuff for lots of people. Whereas if you bring it down to, for simplicity, simplicity's sake, it should all just be about having food, water, clothing shelter the basic needs and things to make life a little more comfortable and i think that's I think where those primitive people were like that i don't think those like early people in mesopotamia were like "Ooh, i want to buy the new uh i don't know the new rock table i don't know what they what <laughs> the new you. rock table it's it's made of obsidian you have to work <laughs> harder for stuff no they, they were just working just to have like a nice little hut and some food a nice little hut yeah, so they'd be lucky to have a hut. Yeah, well, I mean, they start off in caves, right? Because they need shelter. From... Yeah, but once civilization started, you know, there's a few rich guys and then lots of poor people who want to work for the rich guys. Well, you and say when, like... when civilization started, were there rich guys at that exact point? When And what do you think was the actual point when that, civilization that's started? That's what I was saying. When I took but... all these uh, archaeology classes and about early civilizations... Like, I thought it was so weird that to them, an advanced civilization, or even on its way, the basis of it is stratification of society. That's a main characteristic. Uh -huh. So you can't, they would not consider your civilization advanced if everyone was equal. Even though everyone's happy, you're creating beautiful buildings and things that we take as part of civilization, science and learning. But in, when archaeologists look at a society, they're like, ah, they weren't that advanced. Yeah. Are you Zorro? <laughs> oh, you're the mystic grifter. That's the mystic That's right. grifter. This is the mystic grif grifter outfit. I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever heard of somebody called Python Shell? No. All right, because somebody on TikTok says, I look like the guy that teaches Python Shell. And I, I have no idea what that means. Is that a martial art? I don't know. It could be that. Maybe it's like a computer language or something. It could be anything, I suppose. But I um, uh, damn it, I did it again. <laughs> We're back to the law offices of uh, Burp oh, Squabble and Burp. Adorable. Do you like my little hat? Yeah, you got like a Chihuahua. <laughs> yeah, I'm not getting the uh, the option for the other fun things today for some reason. I don't know why. Maybe it's for the best. It's distracting. Really? You don't. You don't like our, the our the BD conversations. Oh, I got to get this hat off of my head. I forgot it was still on. <laughs> uh well. Um, what does that bring us now, though? What's the that? that? But it, what it brings us now, though, the fact that most people are just like at a job they don't want to do. You're spending most of your life doing something you don't want to do, just so you can live. Yeah. Well, I mean, is, I think in the beginning of time, just to live, nobody was doing what they wanted to do. You know, I don't think they knew true. what they wanted to do. Do you think, though, even back then, people liked hunting, just like people do hunting for a recreational activity now? Maybe these people were like, this is awesome. We're going out for the, the bison hunt. I don't know. Yay. It's bison hunting season. It's fun. I mean, maybe it, maybe it became that. At a certain point, you know, um, after doing it for so long, as opposed to it just being a chore, you know. Actually, it's a dangerous chore, too. Like, so I know it was that fun. I mean, well, it's also a bonding experience between parents and children yeah. to go out and do hunting. 
You know, I mean, that like some of my earliest memories of my father are like where we went out hunting, and I hate hunting. You know, I'm. But you didn't have to, though, and it wasn't like you were going to die, like a saber toothed tiger was going to rip your head off. I was going to say, what do you mean I didn't have to? <laughs> I was like, I had to. <laughs> no, but no, you had to. It wasn't because we had to but, feed ourselves, unlike yeah. my father, because when he was raised, he was raised where they had to kill their food. You know, oh, there yeah. was like no grocery stores where they lived. They they lived in like a one room cabin out in the woods in Tennessee, um, back in the nineteen nineteen thirties and nineteen forties. You know, and uh, every day when they got home, they'd have to inspect themselves for ticks to make sure they weren't covered in ticks and to get rid of them. And they have many many recipes for squirrels and for ticks. Because at the time, possibly, I, don't know they find I, the ticks. I, you know, I never asked him if he ate the ticks that they found on their body. Yeah. You know, it's like they have a lot of like tick, tick eating recipes. You know, maybe Wasabi Soda Pop will come up with one um, one of these days. Yeah, like uh, it'll be like Tennessee some... tick soup. <laughs> well, that isn't that where um, Lyme disease comes from. It's from like the Smoky Mountains. Is like from those ticks, or is oh, it I don't like, know. That's where it came from. I just thought it was all ticks could give you that. I didn't know it came from a region. Do you think it actually comes from a clock, mm -hmm. or like from twitches that people have? Those ticks. No. Okay. <laughs> or from the from the app that is live right now, which is uh, TikTok. Mm -hmm. like, can we get Lyme disease from using the app TikTok? I, mean, I it's, wish. It's possible. It's I probably more of the citrus. You know, it's more of like an actual lime that you would get from TikTok. So you know what can hear me? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to say I wish everyone who watched TikTok got Lyme disease. <laughs> I don't really feel this way, but I like the fact that I could say anything about TikTok. Well, again, Ooh. we don't know that the guy who was on YouTube has left. It could have been Sanchez El Dorado who left. And this other guy is still watching. I mean, right now we actually have two people watching on TikTok and we have one person watching on YouTube. So obviously we're incredibly popular yeah. because of that. But anyway, getting back to jobs. And again, our client is take this job and gently place it into your rectum or something along those lines. I keep not quite getting the wording right, I think. But there came a point where Jobs are necessary because it was the way you survived. It was the way you fed yourself. And maybe it was easy. Maybe maybe you started working for somebody else because they provided an additional security. In other words, you didn't have to go out and do the hunting or the gathering, per se. They had somebody else do it. And for you doing this other task for them, like you do with dishwashing, you know, and uh, they will then provide you with a means of which where you can survive without having to go do those other things. So you can do like something. When I go to, oh, what? Sorry. No, go ahead. I'm just saying, like, when I go to work, it's it's not like, oh, shit, it was a bad day for dishes. I'm going to go hungry tonight. Yeah. The the dishes weren't out there. I, <laughs> so the hunting is a risky thing. So not, there might not be animals out there. Right. But you might miss. Well, it was like out. with my dad, you know, they had to hunt squirrels yeah. because there was no big game. So all they had were varmints to, to and feed one day, on. might, the squirrels might have been off somewhere. And Luckily, they, yeah. squirrels are pretty plentiful in the woods, you know. And they, they were probably pretty good at killing them, too. Yeah. And you know, one of my uncles is telling a story about how they would get like a, a thorn bush or something and put it. Or, or like a thorn branch and put it up inside of a tree and then start swinging it around till they could feel like the tail of the squirrel getting wrapped around the branch and they yank it out of the tree and just beat it against the tree to kill the squirrel. Whoa. It was quite the story and, you know, quite descriptive in the way he said it. Squirrels are so cute, I and guess. And he said, he, he said, you know, there's nothing quite like staring down at your plate and then there's like a squirrel, stare, squirrel head staring back at you as you eat its brains. They would eat the brains. Yeah, you can eat all of it. They ate all of the squirrel except for like you get mad squirrel disease from that. <laughs> mad, mad squirrel, squirrel disease. disease. Yeah, <laughs> leave the brains alone. They probably cooked it. I would think. You know, they also eat raccoons. Raccoons were like a so that was a, big game for a them. A delicacy as well. You yeah, know, raccoons, squirrels, basically things that live in trees. You know. Um, and somewhere down the line, they brought big game came from somewhere like deer came from somewhere. So I know that in later years, my grandfather would sit on his porch and shoot deer from his porch. Like other people would go out hunting and you know, he would just hang out at home 
wait for him to come by and he'd finally get him. Why, how come all hunters didn't take his lead and say, that's way better? Well, because you, you couldn't rely on it, you know. Just like you can't rely on going out into the woods that, that you'll find a deer either. Yeah. I mean, but he was sitting on his porch drinking corn squeezes, relaxing in his rocking chair. Yeah. Probably paying his, uh, you know, his jug, blowing into his jug. <laughs> I don't, know that he, I don't know that he had a jug or that he did that. He was a truck driver. Um, did I ever tell you the story? And this is a story I just found out about my last trip to Florida when I was visiting with my dad. That my dad, when he was a kid, had to go visit his father in jail because his father had like stabbed his brother in the neck with a knife. So your grandfather? Uh, my grandfather was in jail, yeah. And I never knew this before. I never knew that my my grandfather had been to prison a few times. And then suddenly a lot of things started making sense. <laughs> Not regarding my grandma- dad, but about his brothers. Things started but your grandmother sense. wasn't in jail because lynching was pretty legal then. My so- grandmother was not my grand grandmother I don't think participated in lynching, but she was definitely pro lynching. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 uh, so you remember yeah. that story. Yeah, so yeah but you never know though. Maybe she was out there just sometimes I wanna go lynch someone, I'm bored. <laughs> I know, but they didn't really come to that part of town, really. So uh, African Americans weren't there for them to go after. They? What do you they mean by they, Matt? I just said African Americans. I'm kidding. I mean, who else would I be referring to? They weren't familiar with other nationalities in the darkness of Those Tennessee. People. <laughs> you know, it's basically us and everybody else is is the mentality there at least for many of them. Unlike my dad and one of my uncles who both got the hell out of Tennessee the first chance that they could because of like the rampant they racism were, and a they lot were of woke. other things. They were the f- for their time period, yeah. You know, for their time period, they were they were a bit woke, you could say. Um, now there was some other story I was going to bring up regarding the what they went through, but I don't remember it. Something it's corn squeezing my Didn't hand is going to be going over the camera because I'm getting blinded by something. There, that should solve that problem. Hopefully, oh yes, I'm no longer getting spots in front of my eyes. Well, this is actually a good time to bring up um, our cooking segment, right? Right? Yeah. 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 Especially yeah. one that was so belabored over and given such care. <laughs> I know exactly. <laughs> All right, here we go. This is uh, Waspy Soda Pop, and uh, he does. This is where he does his thing. At Safe Mart, it's a Safe Mart. Time to Safe Mart and be safe. Safe Mart is a proud sponsor of Food Is for Eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Today's special: one pound of glorious head cheese for a dollar ninety-nine. Come get some at Safe Mart. Be safe. Food is for eating. Food is for eating. Food is for eating with Waspy Soda Pop. Hey there, everybody. This is Waspy Soda Pop with one of the most popular sandwiches in the world. Everybody knows this, but some of you might not. So I'm going to give you my take on the tuning fish sandwich. First, you start off with two cans of chunk light or albacore white tuna. Make sure you chunk them and drain them or drain them and chunk them depending upon your mood. Get a quarter cup of mayonnaise, one hard cooked egg, chop it. And you gotta chop it. Two teaspoons of lemon juice, half cup chopped celery, two tablespoons of sweet pickle relish, two teaspoons of lemon pepper seasoning, some lettuce leaves, you can do like curly leaf or whatever kind of leaf you want, really. And eight slices of bread, I like sourdough. Sometimes you wanna use something else. You could use pumpernickel, you could use rye, you could use wheat, you could use that bread that you find in weird places across the country that I don't know the names of, but you might. And then you also want to get two tuning forks in the key of E. Now, what you do next, in a medium bowl, you combine all the ingredients except the bread and the tuning forks. You mix well, chill for several hours, and then also put the ingredients in the refrigerator to chill for several hours too. So together, you're chilling together. If you want, you can watch Netflix. That's a choice. You want to then line four slices of bread with lettuce. Top each of them with a quarter of the tuna mixture. Place a tuning fork on two of those sandwiches. Cover that with the rest of your bread. And there it is. It is the most classic tuning fish sandwich you could ever have. 
this is waspy soda pop food is free this is the first time i've ever i've i've had that i went to a restaurant in the south tuning fork sandwich i had a tuning fork sandwich but it was a little sharp i think the tuna so i could tell by the taste and i asked the guy and he tested the tuning fork it was an e sharp instead instead of so it was a little off oh okay so the the fish was off. It wasn't E. You got to have the tuna <laughs> fork at E or it doesn't work. I, I, believe me, I tried. Uh, Sanchez well, says, is a little late with, uh, he said, tick kebab. So I guess he's. Uh... Well, I'm sorry. It wasn't E sharp. It was F, I believe. That's that's the next one. Step up. Well, you can have E sharp. It's like F flat. No, I think E just goes to F on the piano. There's no black key. I know. That, that's the joke. D, D, F o. flat is E. F flat. Yeah, so I don't I don't know what the flat would taste like if I had a D sharp, it would be but yeah, you gotta have a tune before it can E. You're right. You know. <laughs> you do. I mean that's what makes it taste better. Because if it's so, off wait, if it's off key, then it tastes funky. That made two sandwiches. Is it, was I correct? Uh yeah, it was like eight slices of bread. Yeah, so each sandwich has four slices of bread? I think it's no, it's four sandwiches, but you have there's two sandwiches that have tuning forks. Oh, well, that's the other two are, are what just normal tuna sandwiches. Now. Those you just disregard or you give to the guys. No. Who, huh? You give to the those, hunters and gatherers. Those are the ones I want. I don't want a tuna for breaking my teeth. What are you talking about? It's the I best. I prefer the other two. I think I think Waspy is having a stroke because he's having trouble pronouncing words these days. Words like words these he's days? having trouble with like the word several. It was like several. <laughs> and a couple of a couple of others just didn't look like didn't sound like they were coming out okay. So I think he's got some issues. Um, anyway, so we're gonna get ready for uh, Ask Greg, everybody. So if you got any questions there on YouTube or um, on TikTok for Greg, he will answer your questions. These will be your opportunity to get a question asked and answered. That does not. Uh oh, did I just kill YouTube? I think I just killed YouTube. You killed YouTube? I might have. I'm calling the police. <laughs> I don't know. I can't tell what happened. All right. I'm going to view the stream on YouTube. Yes. Yeah, somehow I um, had deleted the um, the, uh, the the tab on YouTube. The man who shot Liberty YouTube was the <laughs> bravest of them all. Was he? Okay. Yes. Well, anyway, let's uh, let's let's find out what you have to say, Greg. So, on to our next segment. He has an opinion, may not always be right. He's a real fake lawyer. He's old and he's white. Ask him a question, cause he's a good egg for bogus advice. Ask Greg. Ask Greg? Ask Greg. So, we'll see if we get any questions from YouTube. Nothing. Sanchez Eldorado is delinquent. And uh, he's the only one watching there. And we have one person. He can on make TikTok. a biography of Waspy Soda Pop. And he can't, I know. Even, he can't even ask you a legal question. All right. So <laughs> here is our question for Greg today. Dear Greg, can Will Smith be held legally liable for slapping Chris Rock in the face for making a really bad joke about Jada Pinkett Smith's head? Actually, not surprisingly, because. Uh, uh, the Academy Awards are in a different legal sphere than the rest of the country. Oh, really? When Do you're tell. on stage at the Academy Awards, you can, especially when you're a star, yeah, you can just shoot into the audience with a gun if you want. You could <laughs> murder someone. You're when you're on that podium. You're up near that podium. It's almost like a, just a free zone. It's a, it's no laws don't apply. It's like the purge. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> so, in other words, the minute you walk into the auditorium for the Academy Awards, or maybe the minute they start the show when the the host finally begins the show and starts speaking, yeah, at that point it becomes utter lawlessness in the Academy Awards auditorium, and yeah, anything that's goes. Quite... Yeah, um, it, it was just four years ago. I think uh, Bruce Valanche strangled. 
Liza Minnelli to death, and he was fine. He went home. No one said a thing. No, it was legal. But I think it's on the stage, though. In the audience, you can get, uh, like, misdemeanors are okay. You could jaywalk if there was a traffic stop within the stadium, um, the theater. Or, or so like, jay- could, jaywalking is legal in the theater. Yeah, you could have a small amount of marijuana. Misdemeanors are excused. On uh-huh. stage, you can get away with a lot of shit, like full-on assault, as we saw. Will Smith, I mean, obviously I'm right. Will Smith is not in jail now. The police yeah. never showed up. Mm-hmm. Because that was totally legal what he did. Chris Rock could have pulled a gun on him and shot him dead right for doing that, and he would have been free as well. Oh, okay. So that's the that would have been the right response. Then would have been um, Chris yes. Rock pulling out a gun and killing Will Smith. Yes, I see. but I think also Jada Pinkett Pinkett Smith she egged him on this because at first he was laughing at the joke, and then the camera cut away, and obviously Jada Pinkett Smith was just like. Fucking like, you know, my ex boyfriend would have shot that motherfucker for saying that, you monkey pussy. Yeah. And he's like, oh shit, sorry, babe. And then it went up there. And Well, I didn't see it. Jada smiling at Chris Rock's joke. I saw Will Smith That's what I mean. laughing at the joke. She was not happy. Will Smith was laughing. And she just, you know, she said him straight and said, you better do something about this. But this you're saying that, that Will Smith though, cannot be held liable because of the Academy Awards and anything goes, though. On the stage, definitely, yeah. So if Will Smith had gone up with like a baseball bat and took out Chris Rock's kneecaps. Yeah. You know, like, for example, if he was working for dodgy daycare, then (laughs) that would be perfectly fine. We're here for pasta. What's his name? Pasta Lucci. Pasta Lucci. Pasta Lucci. Was the name of the uh, the founder. The founder of dodgy daycare, which apparently was just founded this year. Strangely enough, it's only been around for a couple of months. <laughs> it has uh, not much longevity. Um, anyway, it, it was uh, ten years ago when the Academy Awards stage. Billy Crystal fondled a small child right in front of everyone. And oh, Jesus, this is fine. Nobody, <laughs> they couldn't do anything. A lot uh-huh. You had you had to go there, did you? Okay, that's that's good, Greg. <laughs> and the small child was the kid who sees dead people. From, uh, so it's Haley Joel Osment. So oh, that's his name, yeah. So Billy Crystal fondled Haley Joel Osment on the stage <laughs> of the Academy Awards a number of years ago, and you couldn't do a damn thing. It's but it was be- actually while Haley Joel Osment was an adult is when it actually happened. So, um, but that would be okay, I would think. Either way, it's not going to fondle anyone. It's against the law, against their will. So, it's, on think- st- but on stage at the Academy Awards, yeah. any crime is able to be committed yeah and i'm actually um me and some other lawyers are um, actually on a committee to change this we're trying to uh you know petition congress something's got to be done because the shit that happened at the people's choice awards last year yeah egregious i mean i thought it was only at the academy awards that's gonna happen no there's others sh- so it's is it all the major award shows where there's celebrities it depends it's you know some people's choice awards are allowed certain felonies is it but like the people awards. vote on the felony that they can get committed? Exactly. Okay. So, yeah. But Academy Awards is just it's just a blanket because it's the big one. It's so yeah. like you're there, you're the you're fucking above everyone else. Do whatever uh-huh. the fuck you want when you're on the stage. Yeah. Yeah. You can so get Will anything. Smith shot Chris Rock from his seat. He might have been in some trouble. What but if he got up on that stage? There's like okay. almost like a magic wall. That he entered into that sphere of lawlessness. Do you think it would have been worse for him to have peed on Chris Rock on stage as opposed to hitting him? No, it's anything goes. I think that would have made uh, a much stronger um, defense of Jada if he had done that. It would have been cooler. It would have been funnier and just like better. Yeah. If he just stood up there and like peed on Chris Rock's leg instead of yeah. hitting him, maybe give him a noogie. Because <laughs> that was pretty harsh. It's like, oh, yo, yeah, but a really painful one, like where he'd be like, ah, like, don't put my wife's name in your fucking mouth, noogie. Yeah. That one, and a titty twister, like really painful. It's Indian rope burn. Two hands, mm-hmm. two handed titty twister is what Will Smith should have done. Here's what you're saying. That's and like actually open. lifted him up. He could have probably lifted him up with that. 
Somebody like, learned to Don't you do that again, Mr. Rock. <laughs> How dare you? Yeah. I mean, that, that's, that's why my group is doing this. We're tired of seeing these things. And there's no... Uh, what's, no just- what's, what's the name of your organization? It's called... Uh, I can't Come wait on. for this. I can't think of anything. Um, um, it's a lawyers against uh, award show violence. Labia. <laughs> lawyers against beating in the Academy Awards. Beating? In, in awards. <laughs> in breaking laws in awards. What? <laughs> So the acronym is LABIA. And yeah. That stands for what again? Lawyers Against Breaking Laws in Awards Awards Shows. <laughs> They're silent. The S so, and the uh, so no. So you could have LABIAs. It's uh, Lawyers Against. But it would actually be LABLIAs. LABLIAs. That's what it's called. LABLIAs. <laughs> Has a nice ring to it. Okay. In awards. LABLIAs. With an accent on the last day, so it's on the first day, so it's what, 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 yes. Say it on the accent. Lablias. <laughs> Is that Greek? Is that a Greek accent you're doing? I, it sounds like it, huh? I, I was know. trying to be Spanish. I don't know. If you're going to do it, you got to throw a plate. That's racist against Greece. <laughs> That's the, don't all this throw is two shows in a row. I think you've called me a racist for. I know, because you keep saying racist things. <laughs> what am I saying that's racist, Greg? That all Greeks break plates. That all Italians are involved with dodgy daycare. Did I say that all Greeks break plates? You just did. Just you at this it. moment, because I repeated what you said. You implied it. Breaking plates? I didn't bring up breaking plates. You said it before I said it. You breaking. said all Greeks break plates. Those are the words you used. You're gaslighting me, Matt. <laughs> You're lighting gas on me. <laughs> so there. How I'm about farting in your general that? direction. <laughs> your mother was a hamster and your father <laughs> smells of elderberries. And you can take this job and place it gently in your rectum. Yes, we have to think about jobs now. We do. So somewhere along the line, we kind of all got off track. But, you know, the fact is that the, the nature of jobs has now evolved in various different interesting ways. Whereas way back when, you couldn't demand getting a certain amount of pay and you couldn't demand getting a certain amount of food for whatever you did, it would be like an agreement. You go, this is what I've agreed to. This is what you will give me. And so then you'd be willing to work for that person. And somewhere along the line, as as I believe you said, the stratification of society became such where the person who is giving you the thing that you want has suddenly decided that they are more important than you. They are worth more than you as a human being. And ergo, they can do whatever they want to you. And you just have to take it because they're holding your little bag of gold in their hands. And you have to do whatever they want because you are merely a monkey boy and must abide by their wishes. And there That's about lies, the gist of it. <laughs> so therein lies, you know, our current state's of civilization but we did in the last in the last 150 years it was a major change for the first yeah. time okay when the work the unions and shit workers said you guys can't do this shit without us so you got to give us something you can't treat us like total peons subhumans i mean because we can go on strike and your money will stop flowing if we do that you do need us even though you think we're less than you yeah but of course, those are eroding. So I think it's going back to that, where we're all just little serfs. Well, speak for yourself. No, I know, but more and more. The only one I am a servant of is my wife. Well, good for you. That's right. I don't know how you don't have to work so much. It's amazing. <laughs> I, I work all the time. Yeah? Yeah, I work to watch TV. I work getting out of my chair. (laughs) Opening the refrigerator door. I work putting together silly things for this podcast. Yes, but they don't pay. Yeah. That's not work. You're telling me. That's your hobby. (laughs) 
It's like it's it's a hobby till you get paid. Yeah, I mean, I always, I think anyone who can get paid for something they like to do, they're, yeah. even if it's very small, like, oh, I sell lots of things on Etsy, my my crochet work. If you're making enough to live, you yeah. fucking win so hard. You Actually, win the game. That begs another question, which is, so way back when, the early days of humanity, and the the jobs were gathering food and eating food and hanging out with other people who were who had gathered food and eaten food and sleeping. What do you think their hobbies were? What did they do when they weren't trying to feed themselves? I think it was sleeping and fucking and shitting and eating. I don't know. Those were sh- hobbies. How could shitting be a hobby? Yes, that's only it. It's like, but okay. unless, you know, they did it to paint with. That was like their painting I supplies. Fecal matter is pretty, like, it really sticks to shit, like, it stays. Unless there's coffee berries in it. No, I bet it stays just as well. I mean, look at your toilet. A toilet's fucking porcelain with water in it all the time. And I've had shit stains on my toilet. Like, how are you still there? You're soaked in water. You're in porcelain. And you won't go away until I brush you away. I mean, that's pretty durable. Can you imagine shit on a cave wall? That shit's going to be there for decades, I imagine. With no water in it. So, like, oh, for the first time... The message has changed on my screen. You just your raised hand your hand. Raised. You raised your hand, and the hand showed up on the screen. That was bizarre. But for, so for weeks now or months, it said you are about to raise your hand, and tonight it said that I didn't mention it. It said it twice today. Uh-huh. Now it's like your hand is raised. You know, I think what must happen uh, on your screen is that it has some kind of motion recognition. Where you put your hand up, and so then it showed up on the screen. So I need to lower your well, hand. Well, what would it say you 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 were about to raise your hand? What would I don't it know. Say, I've never had this. I've never. Well, I mean, because for one thing, you're not an amputee, so it probably recognizes that you have hands because you yeah. bring them up on the screen every once in a while, and that may be what's going on. Put your hand up really fast again and see if that works. Put the other hand up in like a way that you're like raising your hand. No, that didn't work. Well, so much for that experiment. I thought it was another racist theory against Italians that we talk with our hands. No, that's... Hey! What makes you so special? Everybody talks with their hands in some way. You're, not, you're doing the robot. <laughs> that's not talking with that's what you were... I'm karate chopping. Yeah. I was going like an Italian. I was like, hey, listen to me. So, so the evolution of jobs goes from the hunter and gathering, hunting and gathering, hunter rearing... <laughs> Hunting, hunter, being a hunter. hunter or a hunterer, which is a person who then hunts the hunters, I think. Mm-hmm. And then the gathering. And, oh, Sanchez says we're not getting all of his comments. So I don't know what to tell him. Maybe he asked me a question for Ask Greg. And you didn't I don't know. It. it could be when I accidentally killed the uh, the tab. And so the uh, comments. Well, but the, maybe he's I mean, not. I, I bet he's not hitting return on his comments is what's going on. He's not hitting return on the live stream, so it's not actually showing up here. So that doesn't sound like Sanchez. He's very technologically adept. You think he is? I've heard this. Where have you heard it from? Um, Forbes magazine. By the way, everybody who's listening, who or who may be listening in the future, we have a gentleman named Sanchez El Dorado, who's uh, a regular listener of ours on our live stream from the Happy Hour News Team. They have a podcast based out of North Dakota. We do recommend that you go check out their podcast as well because it's just as inane as ours yet they deal with more less topical news stories than we do because we no, they're very topical like if you want to know what's going on in florida on the, if you want to know about the police people, report if you want to talk about an interesting news story and this is something that sanchez el dorado should pay close attention to it's like we have one of the weird news stories happening right here in clackamas county oregon just recently where it was found that in the local Red Robin, a special dressing was placed on a salad for a customer who was complaining of um, being racially discriminated against by the employees at Red Robin. And that special salad dressing is probably what you imagine it was. Yes. Rich and creamy? <laughs> yes. Hidden Valley from the Hidden Valley? Human protein, let's just say... 
human DNA. Yes, your jaw has dropped open like mine was when I first came across the story. There's like a, a current lawsuit going on. So happy our news team. You're welcome. Look that one up. You can have an Oregon man does blah, blah for your show. So how'd she find out? Like, did she like actually take some and say, I took it to a lab? To she? Sam? Who's she? Oh, for some reason, I, I was assuming it was a she. I don't know why. No. Uh, the customer. The um, customer was a man, I believe. So did he take it to a lab to make sure? Yes. Yes. They took it to a lab and they found that he had consumed part of it as well. Um, I'm sure it was, uh, it was human based protein, not animal based protein. And that was, I was reading the story and it said it was a red robin. I'm like, Oh, this is probably like in downtown Portland or something. And it was literally the one that I go to <laughs> the red robin around. Oh my God. I'm like, and I told my wife and she's like, we're never going there again. I'm like, I don't know that the same guy is going to be allowed to. Well, work you're white anymore. though. So you should be okay. Apparently it's only. <laughs> people of some uh, ethnicity ethnicity uh, potentially so yeah they also they, refer, you were Jew. they also referred to the the individual's group as a gang too so that was nice of them at that local store to do oh listen so some like um crips came into the red robin to have you know nice and, and not to stereotype in any way but just for the sake of humor the irony here is that Red Robin shares a uh, parking lot with Chick-fil-A. So that's neither here nor there. Make of that what you will. I thought Chick-fil-A was just homophobic. Are they also known for being racist? I don't know. I'm just throwing things <laughs> out there so that I can get sued because apparently that's why I'm saying stupid I just can't like picture that. a gang member ordering a salad. Maybe that's a stereotype I have of a gang member. Oh, uh, well, I guess it depends upon the gang. Yeah. You know, the well-known um, crouton gang. We're all about getting salads. <laughs> like, the you doing? I came here. I want all the croutons. I want them all over the salad. All the, the croutons. The I don't just Latin. want one crouton. I don't want 10 croutons. I want them all. Every crouton you've got. And I want it now. <laughs> I wasn't going to do an accent. So I got out of it. The Latin vegans, that infamous gang. <laughs> the Latin vegans. <laughs> They're scary. The vegan kings. <laughs> yeah, if, if they, you, they fucking but they don't, I don't think they eat croutons because you know, bread is generally made with eggs. So the bread wouldn't be a vegan item. The croutons wouldn't be a vegan item. It could be vegan bread. It could be, right? Do they make vegan bread? No. And like I said, it's generally made with egg. Isn't it? Isn't it's vegan made pizza with though, right? So they can make pizza crusts as vegan or no? Right, you can get like a Maybe it's gluten free. I'm thinking of. I don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. Anyway, well, can... this our client for today has been uh, take this job and place it gently into your rectum. That has been our client for today. This has been the law offices of Quibble Squabble and Bicker. And next week, well, maybe Brendan will be back. We would love to see that happen. And uh, maybe we'll have a guest again someday. Meh. Who knows? But you know, things change. It's. It's malleable. It's pliable. You know, podcasts... Do we really have to end now? Because we didn't talk about the whole main reason to talk about this client today. What was the main reason to talk about it? In Since COVID, there's been this yeah. major shift in people's attitudes about like, like, hey, I didn't work for a year and it was great. And why do... Uh, people have been questioning this whole system. I don't remember that being you know, reading, the, the catalyst for doing so this. So many people are talking this about client, this now. Though. Like, why... I know it wasn't, but I, I guess I wish we got there, but I guess it's too late. So. Well, you know, you are allowed at any point during the conversation to change gears as I've been you talking are talking about random Italian things, as, Greeks, and I you, forgot as you are wont to do. <laughs> you know, you're allowed to bring those things up. It's okay, okay so Greg. People out there listening, discuss amongst yourselves. <laughs> we'll come back to this maybe some in two years. But it is interesting that, you know, all of a sudden people are finally saying, why the fuck do we live like gerbils on a little gerbil wheel? <laughs> is that what it's called? A gerbil wheel. Who's living on gerbil wheels, Greg? We, every single person I know. We're just fu fucking constantly just like work, work, work. Sleep, sleep, sleep. Why? Why are in, we doing this? a gerbil this? wheel. Is, I don't know the real name for that thing. The habit trail? No. The hamster wheel? Hamster wheel? Is that the same? Yeah, that's, that's a what, gerbil that's wheel, right? You couldn't say a gerbil wheel? 
Well, it's triple. like, uh, what was it? The One of the recipes from a month or two back from, uh, oh, it was like in, in December, the Christmas hamster that uh, waspy soda pop. I don't well, think I there was a wheel in that, though. I thought you were talking about the gerbil marinated in Richard Gere's ass. <laughs> that is the sound of my head shaking, um, <laughs> kind listeners, to that incredibly old, know it's tiresome a, joke that it's Greg keeps bringing up. It's, it's funny, funny to you, but it's I don't... so old and dead as a joke. I don't know why you laugh at that. <laughs> and you laugh at it every time, too. And you're the one making the joke. I don't laugh this hard ever. I'm just really drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's a perfect ending. Okay. I'm really drunk right now. Sorry, Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, this has once again been the law offices of Quibble, Squabble, and Bicker, and their client was take this job and place it gently into your rectum. And uh, Like a gerbil. I told my wife the name of the client, and she said, how exactly is that done? And I had to take a pause and go, I really don't know how you could actually take a job and place it there. But I you didn't suppose... demonstrate? <laughs> no, I, I did not. Let me show you, uh, honey. I am too fat to even come close to reaching my <laughs> rectum anyway. So that wouldn't... <laughs> That wouldn't work. Anyway, so thank you everybody for listening, and uh, we're going to be ending off right now. Your consultation with the law offices of Quiddle, Squabble, and Picker has ended. You may pay your retainer at www.qsblaw.org. Please exit to the right of the water cooler and grab a candy from the front desk. We hope to see you again soon, but you need to leave now. I said leave. Why don't they ever listen? Get out! Get out! <laughs>